A cure for type 1 diabetes could be around the corner, but it won't come in the familiar form of a pill or an injection. Instead, it's the surprising result of a medical journey that began in 2002 at Royal Adelaide Hospital, when world-leading burn surgeon Dr John Greenwood found himself treating victims of the Bali bombings. The main thing that we found regarding the Bali bombings was that the sheer volume of burn cases meant that the normal way that we treat patients, immediate burn excision and very rapid closure, couldn't be achieved. So what I decided after the, after the Bali bombings was that we needed a way that we, or a material that we could use so that when we removed burns immediately, we could temporise the wound. Dr Greenwood spent the next decade developing a game-changing artificial skin product designed to eliminate the need for skin grafts and reduce the risk of infection in serious burns cases. There were a proportion of burn injuries that couldn't survive, irrespective of what we did. And it, and it began to be apparent that with the BTM material, I could save the life of burns patients of any size, including one, one patient with a 95% full thickness burn. And that kind of realisation gives you a, an enormous uh, relief. But while Dr Greenwood was revolutionising burns treatments... I mean, Jess, nice to see you. Thank you. In the very same hospital, Dr Toby Coates was investigating new ways to control type 1 diabetes. I didn't know him, of course, because he was four floors above me. And, um, we, you know, I don't leave the burns unit and he doesn't leave the renal unit, so we never met. That finally changed one fateful day in 2015, when Dr Coates witnessed Dr Greenwood giving a presentation on his latest research. There was one slide that he showed which just uh, was exactly what we've been looking for. So it was like one of those eureka moments when I thought, hang on, this is actually what the, the field has been looking for for the last 15 or 20 years. And here it is, you know, sitting in, in the burns unit four floors down from where I work. So that was really the, actually the, the moment that I thought, hang on, we, we, we need to do something about this. And, and that's when we started the collaboration. By combining their separate areas of expertise, the two doctors have suddenly found themselves on the path to conquering type 1 diabetes. The unique treatment they've spent the past few years developing involves implanting a small patch of artificial skin into a patient's upper arm. The artificial skin stimulates high blood flow, creating a similar environment to a person's pancreas, which is then injected with insulin-producing cells. Once refined, the procedure could put a permanent end to insulin injections. This could be done easily in a GP practice under local anaesthetic. So, you know, we, we're trying to create something that's easy to do, easy to monitor, easy to um, remove, but, but leaving um, a tangible and long-term, hopefully lifelong, um, treatment for type 1 diabetes. Last year, primary school principal Alec Tibbetts became the very first diabetic to undergo a trial of the new treatment. I'm proud to be the first. I do feel quite lucky because I know there were thousands of people that would have put their hand up. My daughter is a type 1 diabetic as well. And um, when my daughter is cured, I want her to know that her dad was a part of that. While Alec can't throw away his needles just yet, the results from his three-month trial suggest it's only a matter of time. At the moment, I'm on about a third of the insulin that I was before. And my haemoglobin A1c, which is a long-term measure of blood glucose control, is now the same as a non-diabetic. Look, we're extremely happy, to be honest. Um, to go from bench to bedside like this uh, in, in your career, nobody gets to do that. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic thing to develop something completely new for the first time. Uh, and then for, for it to work the first time and work so well, uh, we're very, very pleased. Sometimes the best ideas are synergies between clinicians in particular or researchers of different fields coming together to, to have an idea and then um, taking that idea to a realisation. And the realisation in this case is if you can do what we've done in the first patient and have the result we've got at three months, what you have is a, is a cure or a treatment for diabetes that's just not been optimised yet.